Well, good morning. Welcome to the devotion this morning on Wednesday. It's December the 8th, I believe. And I'm continuing to look at a passage that has fed my soul for so long. And we've been there a couple of weeks, and I'm going to read the passage again and continue to look at it for the, the gift that is there in this story. It's in Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 13. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. Uh, today, I would like to talk about the reality that the kingdom of God belongs to us. We belong to the kingdom of God. I was reminded in my readings this morning that once in a while, a lamb will be rejected by its mom. And once the rejection happens, it's, there's no reunion. There are various reasons why lambs are rejected by their mother. In the case when that happens, the ones who are caring for the lambs the shepherd will make sure the lamb is fed and gets to the maturity where it can begin to eat grass and the feed that's available. And in the midst of that time, those lambs bond particularly deeply with the shepherd. All the sheep bond with the shepherd, but the ones who had experience in the beginning of their life, the rejection of, a, of their mother bond particularly deeply. And you'll notice when the shepherd comes around the sheep and calls the sheep, it is those who were rejected who come with the most enthusiasm and joy to join the shepherd in that gathering. I think it's interesting that the disciples were hindering people who brought children. And one of the reasons is that they thought that Jesus was up to religion, this adult activity of keeping an organization or uh, a community together using teachings about God. And there certainly is beauty and wisdom in learning about God and sharing the stories of our tradition and the things that our Christian tradition teaches us. There's beauty in goodness in that but the disciples were missing the basic point the point of our lives is not to know about god the point of our lives is to experience life as a child of god to recognize that we are made by live in within the life of god and we can be rejected by others we can experience conditional love in one degree or another or outright rejection in our early lives we can be raised in places that are less beautiful, have hard times, and perhaps some trauma that becomes very significant in our childhood and remains traumatic as we remember those times growing up. I think it's important for us to remember and to come back all the time over and over again to the reality that we are the children of God and loved by God. And that if anyone becomes a stumbling block to us coming to God as children, coming to God as the ones who are loved, as the ones who receive and share the love of God, that is the moment in which Jesus Christ becomes indignant and refuses to cooperate with any version of learning a religion that prohibits anyone from coming to know themselves as the ones who are embraced by God, loved by God and given the kingdom. We belong to the kingdom of God. We belong to God. 
we are in the love of God. And that is where we not only belong, but where we are. And when we think we're not there, it's just our thinking. It's not reality. Because at every moment, we are made in the likeness and image of God. At every moment, the spirit of God is dwelling within us and around us and filling all of the moments that we have. And if we continue to believe any of those who would get in the way of us finding God, if we buy into any religious agenda that's about power and control and, and um, manipulating ideas of God for the sake of that power and control, then we must, I hope, recognize the indignant nature of Christ's reaction to that. We really are intended to be brought to and to return to the arms of God, the blessing of God, and the troubles we have in our lives. In fact, any original trauma from our childhood, any lamb that is rejected by its mother, are the things that God's love carries us through and gets us over and restores and transforms. It is the place where the sin dwells, and we must be liberated from that. And the way we're liberated from it is to become more and more confident that we belong to God, that we belong to that kingdom. And we come as the ones who receive it and are given our identity and are invited to fully participate in what God is up to in our lives. And the first thing he, God is up to is loving us, is accepting us, is filling us is calling us because we are part of it. I just imagine there may have been a child in that group who was coming from a home with violence or coming from a home where there was a, a terse, judgmental, religious parent or someone who mocked religion and taught their children there, there was no real God. And I don't think the children were having religious thoughts in the arms of Jesus. I think they were realizing they had what they needed. And true religion gives us what we need. The reality of a love relationship with God each moment of every day. And it helps us get over ourselves, get over our raisin, get over and beyond and transform the very culture we live in. And may it be so. May we be the ones who belong to the kingdom of God, that embrace, that calling to the glory of Christ. Amen.